It was very important for us that people did come in and see Harrison. At the same time, we respected that were people that it was too hard, that they just couldn't come to the hospital or couldn't go in the room and look at him. And we respected that and understood it because we very much felt that we didn't know how we would feel if it was someone else that we knew and, and, and what decision would we make. We know what we would do now, but we didn't know what we would do prior to our own loss. At the time after her death, the things that were important were people acknowledging her and acknowledging what had happened and letting us talk about her and how we felt about her, her life and death. I just remember always worrying, how do you tell people? And um, my husband was ringing people and telling me, telling them we had a boy, but he died. And I remember once I actually said to him, well, why don't you, you know, I said, when I rang one particular friend, I said, you know, he was stillborn, you know, tell them that he was stillborn. And he rang and he said, oh, we had a son, but he was stillborn. And they said, what's that? <laughs> so I realised that that wasn't going to work. I guess, I don't know, maybe I was, you know, just finding a way of handling it differently. But at the end of the day, the simplest thing was to say we had a son, but he died. In the days and months that followed Jessica's death, I, I think I just tried to get through every day as I could, one day at a time. I think I just had to get through the initial shock and acceptance that her death had actually occurred. Um, not having any other children, I had a lot to deal with in that regard as well, I felt, because I did wonder if I'd ever have another baby successfully, if I'd ever get pregnant again, if I'd have a safe pregnancy, if I would be safe, because I did have that to deal with as well. And physically, I had a lot to physically get over, so I just... I just dealt with it as best I could. My father said initially, don't have a funeral, it's too hard. It'll be too hard for you. But we found that we had such a strong response from our friends that they needed a funeral as much as we did. They needed to have that ceremony. There's just this wall in front of you and, and you can't... Um, you can't communicate with people because you just don't know what to say. And sometimes they didn't know what to say to you either. I guess when you're going through something that's sad, you really want to just um, crawl in a hole and in some ways not talk to anyone. And just keeping the communication open was really important. We, uh, we tried to um, do a few special things together, go away together, go out for dinner together, just spend time so that we could um, have time for each other and listen to how we were feeling. Also to, um, because we had such different experiences, it was important that we did talk about it. Initially it was just, yeah, just sadness and shock. And then I did go into an angry phase for a while where I just felt angry. Why, why had this happened to her? Why, why my child? Um, and then I think that anger sort of came out on other people who did and said inappropriate things and, yeah, they probably deserved it <laughs> some of the time. It is about being patient with yourself and really allowing yourself to grieve, to feel that pain, feel that pain and believe that, you know, it is a journey, it is a, a way of encapsulating that baby's essence in you and that, and that with time... The pain can be as raw, but it can also you can also find joy in it in the sense that I'm pleased John's come into my life, albeit that he died at birth. I would rather that than he didn't come at all. For so long, um, we were sort of socially mute, or that's what I call it, where if you go out somewhere, people would encourage you, you know, go out, come out, go, you know, let's go out for dinner, let's go wherever. You didn't feel like it, but you thought, hmm, we'd better do it. So you did, but there was nothing to talk about because you had nothing, uh, because of what had happened, you had nothing to talk about, literally nothing to talk about. And it was sort of like this, you just felt like you were just sitting there like um, deaf mutes almost, <laughs> until you so, we sort of... Um, got to the point where we realised that we had to start making plans 
and things and having things to look forward to and and um, and moving through that grief. I don't think I coped very well in the days, weeks and months that followed. Um, I put on the brave face, but in hindsight, I think part of it was shock. I really could not believe that it had happened. I still find it difficult now to believe that it's happened and it's only that I have physical reminders around me that prove that it did happen. Um, a lot of the time is a blur. It was very much sometimes not even day by day, but just hour by hour getting through. Um, the grief would strike me when I least expected it. Um, walking through the supermarket and hearing a song playing that we had at his funeral was very difficult. And day-to-day -day interactions with people were very hard. Um, and it was only with time that I realised that I had to keep talking and I had to heap, excuse me, I had to help others learn how to help me to grieve. And that by walking away from it and being on my own wasn't solving anything. And that I had to confront what had happened and keep talking about it to encourage others to talk to me so that they could support me. I did learn one strategy that a friend said to me was just because I had a few family members were quite difficult and even though they were trying to help they they really made it difficult for me by you know just asking lots of questions and just sort of being on my back so I just learned to not answer those questions and um yeah that was quite hard because I'm the sort of person that always you know would would answer or you know just be respectful to somebody else but I just knew to for myself and to get through I did have to just ignore some people and just not say anything or actually say to them what do you mean by that? I, I can't really say how my husband came to terms with it if he has it all as, as yet um, other than I know for my husband it, it I think he just it was just too painful and he doesn't go there. I know for me I, I can obviously revisit that moment at any time and still feel that pain but generally I feel that for me to come to terms with it, I just needed to talk and really go over lots of different things and sort of, in a, in a sense, understand that I, you know, come to this appreciation that I did the best I could at the time of, of you know, caring for him in pregnancy and after pregnancy when he was born and... Um, just appreciating that I'm grieving for him and that I was grieving and so I just had to learn to be patient with my thoughts. Every Sunday we'd put Blake in the car, make a picnic lunch. I'm sure people thought we were absolutely mental, but um, we used to get in the car and we'd, we'd drive to the cemetery and visit Evan and then we'd drive across and visit my mum and we'd have lunch at the cemetery. And that was, that was our day, our weekend as Sundays, I should say, for months. I'd always wanted to write about what happened to Jessica, even if I never showed it to anyone. I, I liked to write and I always wanted to. And when I actually did do it, I found it very, very therapeutic. It was very difficult to do, but I found that I wanted to put every detail in there. It was like, it was like living it again, which probably wasn't good, but it was very therapeutic to actually get it all out on paper. And I think it was probably my way of saying this really did happen and she really did exist. I'd like to be able to say that um, it's made me stronger or um, somehow maybe a better person, but look, I don't really think it has. I think it's just, it's made me sadder. In some ways it's, um, it's made me more uh, understanding of other parents who go through this and other people in general who have bereavements. Um, I think too it's made me realise that um, that remembering is uh, really important and that uh, we do a lot of things to try and remember Elise.